Hi, we're Robert and Brad, and we're here with the Clarity Clip of the Week and with Dr. Rodney Hill, the futurist at Texas A&M University, to talk creativity. Now, Rodney, a lot of people think that not everybody can be creative, but you've got a process you take your students through where yeah. they I mean, get there. I think everyone can be creative. It's just, you know, through the school systems, uh, they're not exposed to creativity. In fact, they it clips their wings most of the time. If they try to be original or creative or come up with unusual answers, they're slapped down. They expect students to reproduce knowledge. You memorize this, you feed it back on a test, but they don't ask them to ever create anything. So that's what's happened to kids. So I have to show them how to get into their creative mode. And uh, a lot of people call it flow. Essentially, um, when you're in flow, uh, both hemispheres lock into the frontal lobe, uh, and in, it's referred to as optimal behavior. One of the, one of the things we've noticed mm -hmm. is, is, especially with our clients, is they have no idea how to get into the flow. Right. Is there some tips, maybe th three or four tips, where that you take your students through that yeah. kind of gets them yeah. to flow part one or flow 1.0? Sure. Well, what are some of those? Well, getting into uh, you know the first day, um, I'll pass out red apples to a hundred in the class. You know, they're all sitting there with a red apple wondering. <laughs> and, uh, they're supposed to give that to you. Right. Yeah. And so I have them either lean back, they can lay down on the floor, uh, in the aisles, whatever they want to do. And then I take them through an exercise that was written by the Associate Dean of Engineering out at Stanford. Stanford requires two, three hour classes on creativity to graduate in any engineering you know, curriculum. Interesting. And so anyhow, they go through a whole range of what it's like to eat an apple. You know, uh, about a minute into it, they have to bite into the apple. And then we imagine the apple, you know, the sunlight flocking on the apple's form, the way that skin reflects the pattern of deep uh, streaks and dots, not just one color. Gotcha. But anyhow, it goes everything from um, going into the ground you know, coming up, the sap flowing into the blossoms, et cetera. But wow. it's essentially, they're imagining. And what's really interesting, this is the first time, and they're just sort of like in a daze when they get out of it. Now, the second class period, I use uh, an exercise from the Olympic Training Center, okay. which is a uh, progressive relaxation exercise where you flex your hand and, uh, you know, your shoulders. You go through a whole range of right. things, and then you release it. So it gets them in the idea, but a lot of them all of a sudden realize that when they are creative, they go through a series of things. So if you had to tell a business that looks at Robert and I and says, guys, I'm on a mental block. Yeah. I just, I can't, I've been doing this for two years on social media or we're writing or blogs. Weeks. Or two weeks yeah. sometimes. Did we walk in with an apple? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. yeah, should we bring an apple? Yeah. But what would you say for, for a company that says, I've got this team of people and we just seem to be regurgitating and yeah. nothing new's coming out. Right. What are some like real specific steps they could do? Okay, um, there's some exercises you know you can take them through. One is uh, I pass out, you know, I get about halfway through uh, the second lecture on creativity and I say, okay, stop, we're having a pop quiz. You know, and they all go gasp, you know, but you said it was all going to be producing knowledge. <laughs> no, so, wait, this is a creative class. Right. We don't have tests. <laughs> and so I hand them out a sheet, which is down here. It's uh, the chemical formula you know, for coffee. And it goes through a whole series of things. You have to design this container that will keep it at X degrees centigrade. And you'll have you know, a packet in your hand. And you have to be able to get to another room and open the door uh, holding this device. Uh, essentially, uh, just before that, I told them about trigger words, that if you're listening to music, you never listen to music with words in it. Because if you're trying to come up with something creative, you're fighting off those yeah, words. Yeah, you're too busy trying to sing the song. An yep. And so anyhow, uh, they come up with these fabulous Rube Goldberg contraptions. <laughs> yeah, and I have a bunch of them, you know, put them up on the whiteboard, you know, and they're like, they really are. They, don't, they have no they're idea wonderful. where it came from. No, but yeah. they're, they're wonderful. But then I flip in and show them slides of what if I told you this was a coffee 
they would have come up with coffee cups, coffee mugs. Mm -hmm. You know, they wouldn't mm -hmm. have come up with. Yeah, um, this is a chemical liquid. A, yeah, an accordion yeah. thing that lists to a saucer and a valve. You know, a, there's a range of things. Yeah. That's what most businesses are doing. They tell the people doing the creative thing, okay, come up with a. Exactly. Right. They tee it up too much. Yeah. Instead of saying free flow. Okay, we've been talking with Rodney Hill, the uh, futurist at Texas A&M University, about getting into the flow for creativity. Now, in part two, we're going to come back and talk about some other specific steps of how do you get into the flow.